kids. Welcome to day two of Fields of Faith Virtual VBS. Today is Pajama Day, and we're also going to be talking about Fruit of the Spirit, Peace and Patience. We're going to be playing games, making treats, making crafts, singing lots of great camp songs. It's going to be another great day. Let's get started. everyone. I'm Pastor Jen Shaw, and I'm so grateful to be spending this time with you during St. John's VBS as we grow in faith together. One of the ways we grow in faith is confession and forgiveness. We come to God in prayer and confess our sins. Tell him all the things we've said and done that are wrong. And then we hear the wonderful news that Jesus Christ forgives our sins. He doesn't hold them against us. He gives us a fresh start. And so, beloved children of God, I invite you to join me in confession and forgiveness, following along with the words on the screen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the mercy of God. 
The fruit of the Spirit is love. Lord, forgive us for being unloving. The fruit of the Spirit is joy. Lord, forgive us for being bad-tempered. The fruit of the Spirit is peace. Lord, forgive us for being hurtful. The fruit of the Spirit is patience. Lord, forgive us for being impatient. The fruit of the Spirit is kindness. Lord, forgive us for being mean. The fruit of the Spirit is generosity. Lord, forgive us for being selfish. The fruit of the Spirit is faithfulness. Lord, forgive us for being untrustworthy. The fruit of the Spirit is gentleness. Lord, forgive us for being prideful. The fruit of the Spirit is self-control. Lord, forgive us for being irresponsible. For all our sins, Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. Amen. Hear the good news. God is gracious and merciful and abounding in steadfast love. All of our sins are forgiven in Christ Jesus our Lord. He has saved us and given us life eternal. He loves us now and forever. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Lord God, thank you for the opportunity to be together. Thank you for the technology that allows us to share your word with these kids while they're safe at home in their living rooms. Bless our time together this week, Lord. Help us to teach the kids that you are with them no matter where they are. Teach them to grow in God and teach them to bear good fruit. Bless their families, keep them all safe and healthy, Lord. Protect them guide them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's Bible story is in the book of Isaiah. God will bring peace. Isaiah was a special man who gave people messages from God. Trust God, he said with excitement. Count on God to take care of you. Someday God will send us the Messiah, the great Savior and King. Isaiah shared a message about a time in the future when everyone would get along and live together in peace. He said, Soon the mountain where the temple of God is will become the highest mountain of all. People will shout, Let's hurry to the mountain. We will learn about God there. God will settle arguments between people. They will stop making weapons that hurt each other. Instead, they will make tools like rakes and shovels that will be helpful. People will not go to war against each other anymore. Then we will all live in the light of God together. Thank you, Mark. Hello, everybody. Our first fruit of the spirit today is peace. Peace is being free from worry and fear and getting along with the people around you. In the Bible story that Mark just read, Isaiah said that we need to trust in God that God would be sending a Messiah that would bring peace. He would teach people to love one another and they would all live in the light of God together. We know that that Messiah was Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter four, verses six and seven say, do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Jesus is the King of Heaven and can be the King of our hearts. When we let him be the King of our lives, he will fill us with peace. So how can we be at peace during these times of uncertainty? How can we get along with others when we're all stuck in the house together? Just remember that God is with you. You don't need to be anxious or fearful because God has a plan for our lives, just like he sent Jesus the Messiah, our Savior and King. Pray to him, read your Bible, watch church services online, make Jesus the King of your life, and he will grant you peace. You will grow in God and bear good fruit. Amen.
kids, it's game time again. Today's game is called Sheep Herding. And what you're gonna need is a white balloon or any balloon for each player. For this one, I tied on a little sheep's tail and you need a broom for each player. So how this is gonna work is we're gonna put our sheep on the ground. We're gonna use our broom to herd them all the way across the room. It's a race. And you'll want to pick the largest room in your house so you have a long way to go back and forth and whoever can herd their sheep fastest wins. All right, let's see how it looks. Set, go. Well, good evening, campers. Welcome to Virtual Campfire. For this one, we need to go on a hike. Follow me. Welcome back, it's snack time again. Today we're going to be making dirt dessert. And what you need for that is some chocolate pudding, some Oreos, whipped cream, and gummy worms. So first you're gonna make the pudding and your parents can help you do that. And then we are going to start with the cup and we are going to layer it with pudding, whipped cream, more pudding, more whipped cream, and then we're gonna crush some Oreos and add them to the top. And then we'll add some gummy worms. Look at that, dirt dessert. Looks good, doesn't it? See you later.
blind I see. Yes, we know he's trustworthy. Jesus is the light when it's dark. He can heal a broken heart. Arts and Crafts. My name is Joy and I'm here with my mom, Debbie, and today we're going to be making a paper plant, uh, bo uh, garden and a planter box. Today you learned about patience. Um, plant, uh, farmers need patience while they're waiting for their crops to grow. So today, in order to make these crafts, we're going to need... We're going to need some Q-tips. Um, you, you can use popsicle sticks. Um, we're also going to need some paper, some coloring pencils, uh, crayons, color pencils, or markers. And you're going to need some glue. You can use any type of glue and or tape. And you're also going to need a box. So to start with, you can use any kind of box. We've used a cereal box. Yes. Um, cereal any box. box will do. What, how we're going to start is by flipping the box inside out. So once you have an open side, un, you need to undo the opposite side so both ends are open. Find where it's glued together and carefully undo the seam. If there's any extra uh, paper bits, you can just take those off. Then you're going to need to refold the folds and then glue it back together inside out. That way you have a nice clean surface to color on. To color on. And you're also gonna need to put some sort of cardboard or some sort of uh, like protection on your surface so you don't um, like get glue or anything onto the table. You're also gonna need your parents' permission to do any of these crafts. So once your box okay. is flipped inside out, then you can start coloring. Mm -hmm. And to color with, we're going to use some crayons. So I've already had some of this color, so I'm going to show you how we colored it. Uh, we're using brown crayon, just because that's the color of dirt. So I'm just using a brown crayon, and we're using the flat side to just color it in, just like this. And that will be colored in, and it'll be quick and easy. We're also doing some grass in the front. So we're just taking uh, any sort of green and just going up and down and coloring in the grass. And so now we have the box all colored. We're gonna be working on, I'm gonna take that. We're gonna be working on the fence. Um, you don't have to do a fence, but we're doing it just so it kind of looks a little better. Uh, and you're gonna need, um, we're gonna be making three like fence pieces, and depending on the size of your box or what box you use, um, it'll be a little different. So for our fence, we are, we're only gonna need four uh, popsicle sticks, and you don't have to use popsicle sticks. You can, uh, toothpicks work too, and you can do different types of fences. So right, so to start the fence, you're gonna need two sticks on both sides just two and you're, gonna, and you're gonna take these two and you want to put dots of glue at either end like this and you're gonna do that to two sticks now that we have that we're going to glue we're going to take where the place of glue is and you want to just put that onto a popsicle stick just like that so it's glued on and you want to do that for both of your sticks 
and then take your other popsicle stick and put the same, do the same for the other side. So it'll have a fence shape. Just like that. And then this is what it'll look like when it's done. It'll be a nice uh, fence. And we're, let, we're gonna let this one dry right over here. And while that is drying, we're going to make the holes in the box. So in order to plant your vegetables, you're going to need some holes. You can make as many holes as you would like, but for this part, it might be safer to ask a parent for some help or an mm -hmm. older brother or sister. Mm -hmm. So to poke the holes, we're going to go ahead and make six holes in our box. We're going to carefully poke a starting hole with our scissors. Then you can use a marker or a popsicle stick to help make the hole large enough for your sprout to fit through. Speaking of sprouts, and that's what we're gonna do next. So, I'm gonna close this glue up. So we're gonna be making these little vegetables to go into your garden. So it's just a little sprout with a vegetable on the bottom, and you can choose any vegetable you want. We're doing a onion, radish, sweet potato, and garlic. And I'm gonna be making a, some carrot and potato. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some paper and I'm just gonna grab a pencil right here and I'm gonna trace out the shape of a carrot. And it's a, just a little triangle. And for the potato, it's just a, sort of an oval shape. Just like that. So you have your potato and your carrot and I'm gonna color them in so they look a little bit more like a carrot and more like a potato. I'm just gonna grab an orange crayon and Quickly just color that in. There we go. So there we have our carrot. And I'm gonna do the potato. And you don't have to color in quite inside the lines because um, we're gonna cut it out in it a little bit. Now that we have those two drawn, we're also gonna draw some sprouts. So I already have one drawn right here. You, it can just be any sort of like green stick. We're doing it in green. That's usually the color sprouts. So I'm just gonna draw a little stick with a little leaf on it. I'm gonna do that in a So a little leaf, just like that. And we're gonna. I'm just gonna glue one of these Q-tips onto the back of where your sprout is. You can kind of see through the paper. You can kind of see through the paper where your sprout is and I'm just gonna put just a little bit of glue, you don't wanna put too much, to touch a glue onto the back side and just glue about the top half of your glue stick, half the glue stick, just where your sprout is. Just like that. So that is kinda glued on, so I'm gonna wait for that to dry just a little bit. And I'm gonna start cutting out that i'm just gonna cut it out so we can dry oh, almost. got it all right so it's cut out a little bit i'm gonna cut it out a little more a when little it's carefully. dry you can trim around the sprout a little yeah bit i'm gonna more. trim it around when it dries so. and when it's that dry over there and while it's drying i'm gonna cut out my potato and the carrot so i'm just gonna cut these out and it's going to be easier to cut it out when you traced it so you can see your pencil line and just cut where that is be careful when you're cutting there you go i got one potato and you want to help me glue these vegetables onto the sprout sure i'm going to show them how to do that so once your sprout is dry you can glue the vegetable that you made to the bottom of the q-tip just put a little bit of glue in the middle of your vegetable and place the bottom of the Q-tip into the glue and let it dry. I'm put these scraps off to the side. Okay, and now I have my carrot all cut out. I'm going to glue that onto my sprout. It's not dry yet. 
Okay, I'm gonna let this dry and then I'll glue it onto my sprout. Now that the holes are done in our box, you can go ahead and glue the fence onto on. the back. And these are some fences that are, we pre-made and they're already dry. So you want to make sure they're dry before you um, glue them on. So, so to glue the fence on, you just want to put a few dots. You want to put oops, a little bit of glue on each stick, not on the whole. On the whole fence, just on the two sides. And, and just glue that on. And do that for each section. Each While um, the glue is still wet, you'll want to keep the box standing. Like, just up, up just like this. So the fence doesn't slide off. Mm -hmm. right. so and once that's done and the sprouts are dry, then you can go ahead and plant in your garden. If you want to make it a game, you can make two of each vegetable and play a matching game mm -hmm. by trying to match, match the, vegetables the vegetables as you pull them out of the mm -hmm. ground. So we'll so, put that aside to dry. Mm -hmm. And that's our finished planter, or not planter box, painter, paper, paper garden. garden. That's what it is. So now that that's done, we're going to start on our second craft, which is a uh, planter. So the first step you'll is need a, some kind of carton. You can use a milk carton or a yes. box or a water bottle. You'll want someone, a parent or older brother or sister to help you cut the bottom part off. And once that's cut off, then you're going to want to cover it with, with paper. paper so you can decorate it. Mm -hmm. And we're only covering it with paper so it's easier to decorate. So, can you pass me the glue stick, please? Yes. We're using a glue stick just because that works better for us. You but can also just tape it on or use um, liquid glue. So, we're just going to glue paper to the side. Glue that on. If your paper is too short, you can also just tape two pieces of paper together, or you can just glue um, paper on each side and trim it. Mm -hmm. there we go. Other side. And make sure it's all lined up so you don't get any spaces. Since we don't have time to let the glue dry, we might just take the ends to hold it together. Mm -hmm. Once you've uh, glued your paper all the way around, we're going to save some time and just go ahead and tape it. And if you don't have glue, you can also tape it. And then, once you have your paper around, we're just going to cut off the excess. Uh, you can also fold it in, but we have too much paper to fold it in. So we're just going to make a slit and cut the excess paper off. You want to make sure you're being careful. You should also ask a parent for this stuff. Just like that. And oh, one stick. <laughs> and there we go. We can save this for later because maybe we're going to use it for some scraps. Maybe. So now we have our paper glued on. And after this, after you're done with the paper, you can do any sort of design. And you can either do any sort of popsicle stick design like this. Um, but I'm going to choose to do a design with some markers. So I'm just going to do some nice stripes. Like this. I'm going to do it in a few different colors. I'm just going to... And we're going to be growing some green onions in these. 
So to grow some green onions, all you need to do is to cut off the bottom, the root part of the green onion. We cut these yesterday and we just let them soak in some water before we planted them. And some of them have already started to grow some new green onion sprouts. So here we go, I have my box all colored. And so now it's time to plant. So we have some soil here. We had this in our backyard. Um, you can use anything. So I'm just gonna pour some of that. And you can do this step outside so you're not getting a bunch of dirt in your house. And then you can use a popsicle stick to make some little holes. Here, I see you have some dirt in there, make little holes. And just place the little the onions inside. And you wanna make sure none of the roots are sticking out. Sometimes those can be in there. And I think we only have room for four of them. And you don't want to put them super close together, or else they might the root there won't be enough room for the roots to grow. No, I need to poke another hole. Okay, that's one more hole. And I think actually we only have room for three. And then you'll want to make sure the soil is moist. So add mm -hmm. some add some water. water. We have some water in here. We're just gonna water our plants. And then you'll have to be patient and wait and for them to grow. These grow pretty fast. Um, to get like a full stock, it usually takes maybe two weeks, maybe two or three weeks to get a good amount of green onion. But you wanna make sure you water them every day, um, only once a day, once a day, every day. <laughs> and those are our finished crafts. So I think this is, uh, not, I don't think this is done drying yet, no. so. So d we just, to put the things, you wanna put the thing mm -hmm. in, sure. So we just, you can just take your veggies and stick them in the hole and then just like that. And then you'll have a nice little paper garden. And those are all of our finished crafts. Thanks for crafting with us. Bye. Bye. This Bible story is from the book of Genesis. Uh, God's promises to Abram. God came to Abram and made a promise. Abram, you are very special to me. I will take care of you and give you lots of children and grandchildren and great grandchildren. But Abram asked God many times, are you sure I don't have any children yet? God thought Abram needed something more to help him understand. So God took Abram outside and showed him the night sky. Your family will include so many people, there are stars in the sky, God told Abram. Abram stared up at all those stars. He couldn't begin to count all those twinkling lights, stars and stars and stars all around him. Abram looked up at the stars and saw God at work. Abram believed God. Now for another promise, God said to Abram, you will need a place for your huge family to live. I will give you this land as I promised. Are you sure God, Abram asked again? God made a covenant with Abram, a promise that Abram would become a father, a grandfather, a great grandfather, and a great, great, great grandfather, and on and on and on. And all Abram's many, many sons, daughters, grandsons, and granddaughters would live with God in the land which Abram stood. Abram and Sarah's Visitors When Abram was 99 years old, he and his wife Sarai were still waiting for God's promise of a huge family to come true. Abram was getting frustrated. He asked God, what are you waiting for? God spoke to Abram, I will keep my promise and I will change your names. Instead of Abram, your name will be Abraham. Instead of Sarai, your wife will be called Sarah. Abraham was afraid of what God said. He thought it would be, he thought he would be too old to become the father of so many people and his wife was way too old to have children. He fell on his face and peeked up with one eye. Could God really make such a thing happen? Later, as Abraham was sitting by the tent, he saw the strangers walking toward him. Abraham squinted into the sun and wondered who would be visiting him on such a hot day. Hi, Abram said when they arrived. <clears throat> you must be tired from traveling. Would you like to sit down and have some food? Quickly, Abraham asked Sarah to make some bread. He ordered his servant to prepare some meat. Sarah stood hiding in the tent, listening to the visitors. Who were they? Where are they why had they come to her house? And why were they talking about her? She leaned in a little closer. Your wife Sarah will have a son, the visitor said to Abraham. Sarah started to laugh. Didn't they know that she was too old to have a child? The visitors looked up. Why is Sarah laughing, they asked. Doesn't she believe God's promise will happen? God's promise to Abraham did happen. 
Sarah had a baby boy and named him Isaac, which means laughter. Abraham and Sarah's family grew and grew and grew, and God blessed each generation with laughter and happiness. Thank you, James. Welcome back, everyone. The next fruit of the Spirit is patience. In the Bible story, Abraham and Sarah waited a long time for their big family. Abraham was patient and believed that God would fulfill his promise. But patience isn't just about waiting. It's about not getting angry when you want to and not saying mean things when we want to. Patience is putting up with problems, confusion, frustration, and pain without complaining. It's trusting that God is control, is in control, and will help you through anything. Psalm 27 verse 14 says, Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. When you are struggling, God does not want you to react in anger or be unkind to others. He wants you to trust that he will help you through it and will help you deal with your problems in a way that honors him and shows love for others. Jesus is patient with us sinners. We often do things that we know are wrong, but Jesus keeps forgiving and forgiving and forgiving us. A big part of patience is showing forgiveness to others. So how can we show patience? How can we wait for answers and still show love to one another? We can pray for patience. We can find it in our hearts to forgive others, just as the Lord forgives us. And we can trust that God will show the way. Being patient will help us grow in God and bear good fruit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this virtual worship this time at camp and we pray for this virus to be defeated by our doctors and scientists and we pray for a return to normal gathering and worshiping with you in the presence of your body in jesus name we pray amen hey kids did you have fun at day two of saint john's fields of faith vbs I'm so glad you did. We're thrilled that you joined us and we had a great time doing games and crafts and making snacks and singing camp songs. It was also fun to visit with our friends at Luther Glen. Don't forget we're supporting them this week. Tomorrow's theme day is sports day. So put on your sports gear and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. peace, grow in God, and bear good fruit. Thanks, Thanks be to God, and we will!
That was great.